Good morning, APU. Happy Friday. Come on, you got to be a little more excited than that. Happy Friday. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, Marcos. The Lord God is with you. Be strong and courageous. I know you guys are getting ready for the last couple weeks of this semester, and I want you to know that he's with you. Your God is with you. Just take a second to soak that in. The Lord God, God who is mighty, mighty to save, mighty to give strength, whatever it is that you need right now in this season, whether it's school, whether it's relationships, whatever it might be, whether it's future, know that you have a God who is with you. He's fighting for you. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? All right. Hey, I am really excited this morning uh, because you get an opportunity to hear from one of you. Uh, this, uh, this morning, if you were unaware, is Student Speaks Chapel. And we are really uh, blessed and fortunate, privileged to have an amazing student who's getting ready to graduate with a few of you. Who else is graduating in May? Let me see. All right. Cool. And so our, our speaker this morning will be right there with you walking. And she has a word from God for you this morning. I'm really excited to be encouraged and blessed by it. Uh, she is an international business major, a minor in leadership, a vice president of the Anactus Club. One of, our, yeah, one of our senior class mentors, she, she has been all over and done so much here at APU, and we're just so excited that you have a chance this morning to hear from Emily Carlson. Would you help me welcome her up? Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, hello, my name is Emily Carlson, and above all else, it is a privilege uh, to speak before you today. And as cliche as it may sound, or for me to admit, uh, this has been a four-year dream and prayer uh, coming to fruition this morning. Because I was a freshman and I sat just there uh, every day. Well, every day there was chapel, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, faithfully. And I remember the first student speaks and I thought to myself, oh my goodness, APU takes nervous high school graduates like me and turns them into seniors like that? And now I'm one of those seniors and I really don't know how that happened. But the more I'm asked to look back at my time here at APU to say what have you learned and how was it, what was your favorite part, it's clear to me that I can see God's truth being written over my story. And to be able to share a piece of that with you today is, I think, more personally meaningful than graduation might be in two weeks. So thank you to all who helped me get here to all who have pursued God's truth and a daring spirit with me over the years, and to those of you listening, because I believe it's just as vulnerable, a vulnerable task to embark on discovering God's truth as it is to share it and as it is to listen to God's truth. So before I begin, I want to say this. My only hope today is that you walk away with clarity, confidence, and freedom knowing that you don't need my voice to tell you God's truth today. God's truth is being whispered all around us constantly. From his word, his creation, and above all, his people. You are enough, worthy, and capable of hearing his truth today and in your own story. So let's tune in to God's truth and to the voice of the Lord today. Would you pray with me? God, you are good and you are with us. You breathe life into us so that we might become flesh of your flesh and made in your own image. You are the great narrator who paints in stories. And I pray today that your truths ring much louder than my own narrative. I pray you capture the hearts and minds of those listening today and reveal truth to them as I speak of how you are painting their story. Amen. So at the beginning of this year, uh, Peggy Campbell, at the first chapel in place of John Wallace, Peggy's our, our board chair of our tr uh, board of trustees, she said to us, uh, confidently said to us, proclaimed even, this is going to be the best year yet. Now freshmen, I'm sure this just echoed the overwhelming optimism of orientation week, um, but for those of us who had at least a year or two under our belts uh, at APU, Peggy was calling the Lord out to fulfill a very big promise. The best is yet to come. Even with three years of some pretty grand adventures under my belt, I believed, Peggy, uh, that this year could have been the best one yet. But I know some of you are thinking the opposite. Emily, how could this year have been the best year yet? 
I've experienced doubt, loneliness, rejection, heartbreak, a broken home, divorce, abandonment, even death. And I'm sure you all have a million and one reasons of why this year can't be the best one yet. Anything but the best one yet. But what if I told you this? We cannot escape God's goodness. Think about that. We cannot escape God's provision of goodness. No matter how terribly heavy life may feel right now under the weight of finals or stress, pain or loss, or even the weight of your past, no matter what choices you make in the future, and yes, even the choices you make after graduation, yes, even then, you cannot escape God's goodness. There is no mistake too big, no path too long that will take you far enough away to escape the goodness of God. Psalm 139 says, where can I go from your spirit? If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me. Even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day for darkness is as light to you. Emily, but how could God's goodness cover my darkness? How could God really be a good, good father? Well, I could stand up here and tell you all the conventional ways that God's been good to me here at APU. Um, I was an alpha leader, I studied abroad, I've been to at least like 12 different countries here at APU. Uh, I was an RER in Adams and shoot to my surprise I was nominated for homecoming court and now I'm here as a student speak speaker. But I'll tell you that the best gift I've received, considering all of them, has been the gift of God's goodness in my darkness. So the summer before, this best year yet, I was actually uh, started taking medication for depression. And to many of you, I'm sure that comes as a really big surprise. Many of you have seen me all over campus, uh, but only a few of you have seen me in the darkness that depression brings to this place. I'm sure many of you can relate more to the gift of depression than you can to my set of experiences here at APU. And yes, I meant it when I said that depression is a gift. This is why. So I was sitting in a room uh, fall semester with a bunch of Mexico outreach leaders uh, before we were leaving for Thanksgiving. It was the usual chaos of chatter and activity. And then our SMC's uh, student ministry coordinators came up front and told us that this would be a chance for us to receive prayer individually. Well, I was feeling confident. I was feeling really secure, strong, didn't think I needed prayer. Uh, last semester I felt really was one of my best here at APU. Uh, I thought depression was at bay with medication. Peggy had said it was the best year yet. Certainly, I was fine. I could do this. But all of a sudden, Bob, one of our, our Mexico outreach directors, uh, interrupted everything, said we need to stop. Everyone close your eyes and put your hands on your head. And yes, you'll all look silly, but you all should have your eyes closed. I think we need to pray over our minds. Never had I ever had anyone stop me to pray over my mind? And it seems really obvious to me now that I probably should have done that sooner. But Bob prayed to cast protection over our minds that only gifts of the Lord would enter in and anything that didn't belong, fear, anxiety, insecurity, doubt, depression, those things would be cast out in the name of the Lord. Well, I went up to, to Bob after and granted I'd never met Bob before. And I said, thank you for your prayer tonight. I was actually wondering if you could pray for me for and he interrupted me, and he looked at me, and he said, you know, when I see you, like right now, when I see you, I see a crown of joy upon your head. And I was about to say, Bob, uh, can you pray against anxiety and depression? And here he was, proclaiming a crown of joy upon my head. I crumpled, and I bowed my head and received his prayer, but I wasn't sure I was ready to receive something like a crown of joy just yet. So the next day, I was in a three-hour leadership class, and our professor gave us 30 minutes to exit the classroom for a Sabbath, without our phones to just sit and rest and to come back after 30 minutes. So I found myself in the middle of the rock pit next to Seegerstrom, and I was picturing this. So before me was a grand room, like a really tall room, a long room. Uh, the same room that Indiana Jones or Aladdin finds and the light lights up and there's treasure before them and it's, it's completely disorganized. But this room was full of only crowns, each of a different color and design, no two were the same. 
the Lord came alongside me and tried to give me the crown of joy again. He said, and I said to him, Lord, like not me, I don't deserve that. Because what great irony for God to give something like a crown of joy to someone who's medicated for depression. But the Lord looked at me and said, the crown you deserve, the crown of thorns, it's not available. Someone's already chosen that crown so that you can choose the crown of joy. And when I took the crown from his hands, he turned back to the piles of crowns and says, now the problem remains. My children aren't coming to claim these crowns. I started tearing up and I crumbled again, but this time I was kneeling to receive the crown of joy as, God, as Bob had prayed. Because when you wear a crown, your posture changes. You stand upright. So I stood and I went back to class. I went back thinking, what a gift to be given a crown of joy, to be given a crown of God's kingdom, to be given a gift of his spirit. It wasn't just a gift, but it was a symbol of his invitation to rule alongside him in his kingdom, to bring people to come claim their crowns and to join me in the kingdom, to build the kingdom from the disorganized mess I saw, one crown at a time. I know God creates good gifts out of darkness because he made a crown of joy out of depression. So I've told this story again and again to people uh, this year, and I'd often pray, Lord, if you give me one more good gift before I graduate, please let me help just one person discover what their crown looks like and what it's called. So I waited, and I waited, and I prayed something like Psalm 25. It says, make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. I'd say things like, teach me how to see with your eyes, to see the people on this campus with the crowns that they wear, to have your truth, to speak those crowns into existence. Teach me your paths. Wait a second, what do your paths look like? What am I looking for? So everyone in this room has asked themselves this question in one form or another. Lord, what does your path look like? What does it look like after graduation? What am I supposed to do? Can you just tell me already? But let's be clear, Psalm 25 says, make me know your ways, teach me your paths. It doesn't say make me know my way or teach me the path you have for me. So what marks the way of the Lord? What marks his path? I think his paths are marked by his fruit. And when we follow the fruit, we'll follow his path. Fruits like love, faithfulness, joy, and goodness. Those gifts, you can't pick them up easily. Because the best relationships are worth fighting for and the best stories have struggle and conflict and certainly the good news of the gospel wouldn't be very good without great sacrifice, betrayal, and loss. The goodness of God isn't the absence of bad things. It isn't ease and it isn't comfort. God's goodness is the provision of things undeserved. Things like growth, challenge, learning, community, love, strength, and for this year, for me, it meant joy. You cannot escape the goodness of God. He will continue to provide you his goodness even when it's undeserved. So now I think I wouldn't be a true chapel speaker unless I attempted to teach you some Greek or Hebrew. Um, so I looked for the Greek for goodness and I'm good, probably gonna pronounce it wrong. I've never taken a Greek class here. Um, but agathosune means uprightness of heart and life. So my question to you, what does it mean for you to walk upright in heart and life? To recognize you cannot escape God's goodness and thus have to choose to walk in it every day. To let your story rest in the goodness of God can you walk upright in heart and life? So to my dear freshmen, walk upright in heart. Walk upright with confidence in your heart to be yourself. You are uniquely created in the image of God and thus uniquely designed to impact his kingdom and to impact APU. So challenge this place to create a space for you. I dare you. Sophomores, walk upright in heart and life. Walk upright in peace, knowing you don't have to do it all. You are enough as you are in your heart and in your very life itself. Pursue the Lord's life-giving gifts 
and don't try and pursue every gift because you'll get exhausted unwrapping them all and you won't have time to enjoy even one of them. Juniors, walk upright in heart and life. Walk upright in the strength and pride that you found. Be pride of, proud of the life you've discovered and made for yourself here at APU, but recognize the taller you stand, the larger the shadow you cast. And there are a lot of people, freshmen and sophomores especially, that are standing in your shadow, looking to you, hoping to find their confidence and peace. So be mindful of your shadow and your influence, but don't stand taller at someone else's expense. Seniors, walk upright in heart and life. I know when I say the word walk, there's one thing you're thinking about. <laughs> it's in two weeks. But I challenge you today, don't forget the confidence, peace, and strength that you've already learned to walk in here at APU. I promise you when you leave the good gift that is APU, there will continue to be good gifts in your future because we cannot escape the goodness of God. No matter how far we travel, be it to New York City, South Africa, or China, no matter how far we stumble, no matter how far we fall, God's goodness, his provision of community, faithfulness, love, goodness, and joy will find us. He never stops searching for us so that he can lavish upon us the grace of his goodness. Walk upright in your heart and life today and tomorrow, knowing that you cannot escape God's goodness. So maybe you're wondering, did God ever answer my prayer? Did I ever help someone discover their crown? Well, you tell me. Will you choose to wear a crown of the kingdom of God? Will you walk upright in heart and life in the goodness of God and the gifts that he gives? Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the truth you revealed today and for the truth you've been revealing every day. Your kingdom is full of crowns and we dare to say we are ready to claim them to live in your goodness, no matter what lays ahead. I pray you remind us of how to recognize you and the paths that you walk. May we walk behind you today and tomorrow in darkness and in light, in goodness and in joy. Amen.